James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to have Solar Weather 201. It's going to be our second level class. I hope you all stick with me. The question we're going to answer is, is how do we have solar winds from the coronal hole hitting Earth at 744 kilometers per second, or at least hitting our Discover satellite at 744 kilometers per second at Lagrange point one and we only have a kp3 index and have for over nine hours when in fact when we had solar winds at 450 just the other day we were in a g1 and g2 geomagnetic storm without any significant plasma whatsoever i.e plasma was around five centimeters cubed how is that possible? We're going to explain it all to you today. To get started, as you can see, we have solar wind speeds at 744 kilometers per second currently. They were at 800 throughout the last few hours, throughout the last hour, and we've still had a KP index of 3, or around 3. Now, a KP index is really a measurement from the ground of a combination of solar winds and plasma hitting the earth at any given point or measurable area. And, well, a geomagnetic disturbance is usually a KP 4.5 plus, a geomagnetic storm is usually a KP 5 plus. And, of course, as you move up the KP scale, you're looking at a more severe geomagnetic storm. Now, before we go into today's lesson, I wanted y'all to remember that this disturbance over here, this G3 disturbance, it looks like, was caused with 450 km per second winds and plasma at around 5 to 8 centimeters cubed, which no one could believe. I mentioned our quote-unquote fields were down at the time, and really I meant to say that well, the incoming solar wind or coronal mass ejection had a southerly orientation and a southerly angle, whereas Earth's magnetic field always has a northern orientation. If Earth is ever hit with solar winds or a coronal mass ejection that has a southern orientation or a negative BZ, and a southern angle, well, it's going to react much stronger. And down, well, through this time period, that's exactly what we had. We had a CME with a southern orientation come in and hit Earth. Well, we just discussed that Earth's interplanetary magnetic field is always guarding the northern part of our planet. Now, here, we have solar winds that go up to, well, way over 800 kilometers per second, some up to 855 kilometers per second. This is a coronal hole uh, wind, and this is twice as fast as the CME that came in the other day, but we only got a G1. And for the last nine hours, we've seen no activity whatsoever. Although I do believe the next three-hour bar to drop will show a geomagnetic disturbance or storm once again, and I will show you why. Let's first remember how our solar system really looks. So this is an artist's rendition. Our solar system is far from on a flat plane. We have the sun moving away from the Big Bang, and the planets orbiting the sun at different speeds. So this exposes, well, usually the northern part of the planet to our star. Now we're looking at the Discover satellite that is on Lagrange point one, one million miles above Earth orbiting. Remember the sun's 93 million miles away. Now scientists never know how much trouble we're in until the coronal mass ejection, i.e. plasma, 
or solar winds hit this satellite and they can get an idea of what's called the BZ which is this red line here and then the phi GSM which is the angle angle of the solar wind or the chromal mass ejection so these two components play a huge role in what's going on now if you have a positive BZ i.e. the red line is over zero usually the impacts uh, to earth from even strong solar winds and a lot of times even a strong chronal mass ejection are minimal that means you have a well northern orientation to the inbound well solar winds or plasma and it should deflect off earth's imf interplanetary magnetic field now when we look at our phi gsm we look at the angle now the bz is the most important factor but the angle is just as important and oftentimes i point to the blue and say our shields are up well that means that we have a northern angle coming in and that everything should be deflected uh, and you can see when bz drops here what happens it goes into the pink here when bz drops here well we're already in the pink here our shoes are currently down or have been. That's why I believe that the next shoe to drop will show a geomagnetic storm or disturbance. While our shoes were up, even though we were getting hit by very strong solar winds at 860, 854, we still only had a KP 5.3 or G1 geomagnetic storm. Just the other day, as I will show you, we had 450 kilometer per second winds, no plasma, and we had a G3 geomagnetic storm because our, well, our BZ was in the negative and our angle was southerly. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Hopefully it will start to make more sense. Right now, we've had plasma generally well, all the time under any kind of space weather threshold here although we had coronal winds from the coronal hole come in at over 850 kilometers per second now we're looking at discover on a three-day chart look here our bz is negative almost all the time here you can see they make it easy by putting it in purple and our shields are down here and this is when 400, look, 450 kilometers per second, and we were flabbergasted, 350 with no plasma put us into a G3 geomagnetic storm. And that was this period through here. And you can see, most importantly, that BZ is negative except for a moment here. And our angle is southerly. So that makes the planet extremely vulnerable. Now I'll explain to you why. We'll switch back to a one-day chart first. All right, see if y'all can stick with me here. Remember, BZ in red above this gray line right here is going to be positive. And that's a great thing. That means that orientation is to the north. And the BZ below that means the orientation is to the south. This means the angle is to the north, the angle is to the south here. The solar wind's magnetic field orientation, specifically the BZ component, determines whether it aligns with or opposes Earth's magnetic field, which in turn affects geomagnetic activity. A southward BZ, negative valued BZ, is oriented opposite to Earth's magnetic field, a line for magnetic reconnection and a crack to open in the magnetosphere enabling energy and charged particles to enter and cause widespread geomagnetic disturbances storms and auroras a northward bz or positive value is aligned with earth's field causing the solar wind to deflect away and resulting in minimal geomagnetic activity 
Now this needs to be used with the angles as well as the orientation of the BZ. And the angles are referred to as the phi GSM. And this is the second thing we're looking at here. This refers to the angle of the interplanetary magnetic field in the geocentric solar magnetospheric coordinate system, which is a key parameter for understanding solar wind behavior and its impacts on Earth. A change in the phi angle indicates a shift in the orientation of the interplanetary magnetic field carried by the solar wind or plasma, which can significantly influence geomagnetic activity and trigger geomagnetic disturbances, storms, and auroras. The solar orbiter, in this case Discover, we used to use ACE, their phi instrument measures the magnetic field at the sun's surface, where either the explosion or the coronal stream occurred and helps model the solar wind that outflows from the sun uh, as described by the European Space Agency. So we must first remember that Earth's interplanetary magnetic field is always oriented to the north. And if solar winds or plasma come in from a southern orientation and angle, Earth is much more affected by these solar winds and or plasma CMEs in the form of increased geomagnetic activity. This holds true for both solar winds and coronal mass ejections or plasma events. Now, when we have opposite alignment, solar winds with magnetic fields at point south, directly opposing Earth's north pointing magnetic field, we get opposing magnetic fields and they are able to connect, creating a pathway for energy and particles from the sun to enter Earth's magnetosphere. This process obviously allows more charged particles to be injected into the upper atmosphere, leading to more intense and widespread geomagnetic activity and auroras that can be seen sometimes at very low altitudes. If we have a positive BZ or northward BZ and a positive phi GSM angle, a positive angle, we see what's called a parallel alignment since Earth's interplanetary field is northernly oriented and angled. If we have solar winds or plasma with a magnetic field that also points north parallel to Earth's magnetic field, we get deflection of the solar activity. The alignment causes the solar wind to be deflected around Earth's magnetosphere instead of connecting with it. Minimal auroras occur, little energy is transferred into Earth's atmosphere, resulting in a much lesser degree of geomagnetic activity and no significant display of auroras. The direction of the inbound interplanetary magnetic field, known as the BZ, is determined by the complex magnetic fields and solar winds originating from the sun. While scientists still can measure its real-time orientation, the specific cause of why it flips north or south is not yet fully predictable or understood. The orientation of BZ and its angle of phi GSM is influenced by magnetic fields embedded within the solar wind and coronal mass ejections that travel from our sun. We're not going to go over the BX and BY today, which is really our orientation to the elliptical plane in which Earth orbits. But what we will do is discuss, well, why it's so hard to determine what the BZ is going to look like with any given storm. While the exact BT orientation angle is not consistently forecastable, several factors appear to influence why BZ can point north positive or south negative. The magnetic field lines within the solar wind can fluctuate and become twisted, which in turn influences the orientation of the BZ. 
Coronal mass ejections are large explosions of plasma and magnetic field from the sun carry their own magnetic configuration. When a CME impacts Earth, its internal magnetic orientation can cause the BZ to completely flip one way or another. What else would influence BZ being positive or negative? The magnetic polarity of the region on the sun from which the CME or high speed solar wind originated plays a major role in the initial orientation of the magnetic field it carries. Although the science of determining how this will affect the north south component and angle are not yet fully understood. The north or south alignment of the BZ is the most important factor for geomagnetic and or auroral activity on Earth. In conclusion, southward BZ and angle negative, incoming solar winds and plasma, when the IMF points south, it is opposite to Earth's northward pointing magnetic field. This allows for magnetic reconnection, a process where the sun's magnetic field lines connect with Earth's. This connection opens a rift that allows solar wind particles to more easily pour into our atmosphere, enhancing geomagnetic activity and auroras. And with a northward BZ and positive angle, i.e. with incoming solar winds and plasma, when the interplanetary magnetic field points north, it is aligned with Earth's magnetic field like two bar magnets pushing against each other. This alignment creates a protective shield that deflects most of the solar wind, resulting in little to no geomagnetic and or auroral activity. Now, hopefully that wasn't above anyone's head, but basically all I said was, if the red line is above the gray line, there's a very good chance that Earth's going to be protected. And if our angle is blue, there's also a very good chance that Earth's going to be protected. No matter what the plasma amount, no matter what the plasma density, no matter how fast the solar winds enter our atmosphere or try to enter our atmosphere, and are deflected. With that said, God bless. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.